Well, I'm joined now by Vladimir Goldstein. He's an associate professor of Slavic studies at Brown University. Welcome to the broadcast, Professor. Hello. Did President Putin succeed in re reassuring people that the economy is okay in Russia? I think he surely did. You know, he uh, showed his mastery of numbers. He stressed uh, some kind of successful Russian industries. Of course, he highlighted successes in uh, military um, industries. He also st st stressed successes in agriculture. He stressed the need to develop new ways of, uh, of you know, coal industry. Uh, he also showed that how much kind of he's concerned that he's interested in, you know, trying to build, a, you know, bridge to Crimea, and he's interested in sort of in, in supplying all distant uh, areas with with economy. He, sh he stressed that this process of, you know, substitution of imports uh, because Russia sort of, you know, is getting less you know, material from the West is being very successful. He stressed this pharmaceutical industry and other industries are doing well. And, you know, he also, which was very important for, for Russians, especially for Russian budget, for Russian, you know, pensioners, for Russian, you know, hospitals, uh, the price of oil is stabilized and going even higher. So he said it, it will be a source of additional revenue. So I think he succeeded in, in stressing that the economy is, you know, reached a bot uh, bottom and already mo moving upward. He also said that Russia was not to blame for the 2014 war, and he went on to slam Western countries, saying that they had an unconstructive policy over the UK Ukraine crisis. Uh, do you expect those policies and the, and the, uh, the um, sanctions to be lifted moving forward? I think they have to be uh, lifted moving forward. What uh, President Putin did, he stressed sort of Russian, Russian take of things. Uh, you know, he was asked by a uh, Ukrainian correspondent who said, do you know when, you know, all said and done, you know, many people will see that Russians are aggressive? To which he responded, no, that's not the case. You know, who is aggressive is the Kyiv authorities who uh, introduced army into eastern Ukraine and bombard people and kill people. So that's what he stressed. Uh, and he said, that, therefore, you know, since we have different positions, what's important for all of us is sort of to work together. He uh, expressed his confidence that e Ukraine eventually will start working and cooperating with Russia economically. And then he stressed that the sanctions are actually preventing people. He was very skillful connecting economic sanctions with political situations. He said, you know, what we're doing with the sanctions are pulling countries and, you know, cultures apart. Well, what we need now is precisely the unity. He said, had we worked, uh, you know, more closely, say, with Germany, other European sort of uh, countries, maybe we could have prevented uh, the terrorist attacks and so on. So he, I think he was very skillful in, in, in that, stressing that, you know, what the countries need are cooperation uh, and not the sanctions, not something which drives them apart. And I think he stressed the Russian commitment to, you know, to people in, you know, eastern Ukraine. He also stre stressed his take on uh, Crimea. He said, you know, that what, what was happening in Ukraine was, you know, a particular complex situation as a result of which there were supposed to be elections. They didn't take place. You know, Kovic was, was kicked out. And that's why, you know, pe people in, 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 in you know, Crimea re rebelled and wanted to join Russia. So he, he stressed Russian take of things. Vladimir Goldstein, thank you for joining us from Brown University.